A very, very good morning to all of you beautiful people watching this morning. And yes, it's a beautiful morning from wherever you're watching. God's richest blessings to each and every one of you. If you're joining us for the very first time, a special good morning to you as well. It is good to have you joining us this morning as we spend some quality time together in God's Word and also just praying, not just for our nation, but for nations, because we just need God to just infiltrate and move and really just saturate this world this broken world, this hurting world, with His love, with His grace, and with His mercy. And so this morning, it's awesome to have you all plugging in this morning. I'm just going through, as always, to encourage you that if you've got the capabilities this morning, if you're watching and you have the capabilities of sharing or tagging somebody onto this, to just encourage you to just do this, not to make... Um, Sweetwater is famous or make Pastor Kali famous, but to make Jesus famous. And I would encourage you that you do this now, even as I'm watching now. I'm just going to share. There we go. And yes, I've done my bit. So if you are able to do this, just click the share button and or tag somebody, tag a family member, tag a neighbor, tag your neighborhood. Yes, you heard correctly, tag your neighborhood, tag your world. And at the same time, the same token, if you've got the capabilities to put comments in, this is the beauty of being interactive, where you can put comments in, put your prayer requests, put, you know, put even a hello or a good morning. It's blessed to have you joining us this morning. So if you're joining us, whether you're joining us on YouTube or on Facebook, it is blessed to have you with each and every one of you this morning. So give us a wave, an emoji wave. Yes, that's the way things are happening this morning. Give us an emoji wave. Give us a good morning. If you're watching locally, if you're watching from a Mamsen Toti or outskirts, a good morning to you. If you're watching from a different province, good morning to you also, family. And if you are literally watching from a different country, um, good morning to you from wherever you are watching from. It is blessed to have you here this morning. So again, I would encourage you as we move along, as we don't forget to share or tag somebody the power of invitation. So I would ask you that you are able to invite somebody. And the one way that you can invite somebody to this, the one way you can be an evangelist this morning is to literally all you do, literally all you do, just take your finger and go, whoop, share. And that's literally all you do. And I would encourage you to do that. But this morning, I'm going to go through the list as quickly as possible. So if I miss you, it means that either I didn't see you on or you didn't say good morning. So um, good morning, Anishka. Good morning, Destiny. Good morning, Gail. Good morning, VG. Good morning, Lynette. Good morning, Tammy. Good morning, Naomi. Good morning, Terry. Good morning, Cookie. Good morning, Colin. So awesome to have you online. Good morning, Lawrence. Good morning to a beautiful lady, Lorraine. Good morning, Johnny. Good morning, Edwin. Good morning, Shirley. Um, let me go through this. Good morning, Richard, from wherever you guys are watching from. Good morning, Cheryl. Good morning, Sibu Sile. Good morning, Mbale. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, Pamela. So again, if you are joining us and you are able to just give us a good morning, even just good morning, Ellen. Good morning, all of you. Again, if I miss you, good morning, Beulah. Good morning, Letty. Good morning to all of you this morning, whether you're watching from Facebook or you're watching on YouTube. Once again, good morning to you. If I miss you, I'll try and get through this during this time that we have together. And it's awesome to be back. I was away for a few days, and thank you for allowing us to be away for a few days. But I'm back, and it's good to be in the house this morning. But I want to encourage you about something that I was pondering about in the time that we were away. Um, can you believe it that we are in the month of October or 
the 10th month of this year, which means then there is literally only two months left. And so, good morning, Stephen. So, this brought upon this understanding and idea, and I want to share this with you before we get into a time of prayer, because there's a lot that we need to pray for. And just to prepare our hearts, what we're praying for this morning is, um, first and foremost, to finish this year well. To finish this year well, because like I said, we're already in the 10th month, and there's literally only, if you in include October, then it's November, and then it's December, so it's like literally three months, then it's done. Then 2024 is like just a mere, you know, understanding and a thought behind what happened. But I want to encourage you to think about this, um, where you are right now in this year, um, what has happened in this year, um, what is the struggles, what is the accomplishments that you have had this year. But also we're going to be praying for, at the end, also praying for many situations, not just in South Africa, but also around the world. We know about also the war that's happening in Israel between Iran and the Palestinians and, and, and all of that. So we want to pray for that because there's just so many innocent, innocent people that is affected through this war. Uh, I, I watched, I think it was yesterday or the day before yesterday, where they were talking about how many people have died during this war already. And it's some ridiculous amount and sad amount, crazy amount to think about. Is like 16,000 children died during this war already. And so it is crazy. Um, so we're going to pray for that. But also we're going to pray for the Hurricane Molten that's happening also in America, um, going towards Florida, um, Tampa. So we're going to pray for that because God is also a God that can calm the storms and can, you know, peace be still or waves calm down, storms calm down. And we know that God is even in control of all storms. And so we're going to pray for that, that God will literally almost in a sense redirect all of that, that we would see no devastation, no lives taken away because of this hurricane. But this morning I want to share with you before we move any further. Good morning, Monica. Good morning, Philip. Just on, like I said in the beginning, to finish well. And have you ever heard this phrase? Because I've heard it many times before. It's not how you start, it's how you finish. I think sometimes it's like how coaches like to, to motivate their team halfway, you know, half time, like when they like, you know, like 14 0 down and they're like, you know, the, the team feels like depleted and defeated. And then they, they like, then the coach is like, I don't know how to encourage this team. And then he goes and he says, It's not how you finish. Yes, we didn't finish. Uh, it's not how you start, it's how we finish. And like the coach might say, But you are know, like, I know we didn't start well, um, maybe we we, we we a little bit slack in the beginning part, but I know we can do this, and I know we can finish this and win this race and finish this well. And so I want to encourage you with this scripture here in 1 Peter 5, 10, and it says, And after you have suffered a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, confirm, strengthen and establish you. I love that. Let me just repeat that. And after you have suffered a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. See, in everything we do, we choose it or not, there is a finish point. Whether we like it or not, in everything we do, everything we, we put ourselves to, there has to be a finish point. The day the last baby leaves the nest, the moment we pack up our desk from the job to say, I'm retiring, the time we put a completed check mark next to a goal or a to-do list. But how we finish our season is vital. If we quit before it is finished or run defeated to the finish line, we might miss the strength that God has given us and awaits for us at every turn. 
Beneath the layers of fear when a session is ending or not going according to what we have planned for is this thread of courage from our God and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. God sees, and I want you to know this, first and foremost, God sees your effort and hard work in each season that you find yourself in. And he wants to prepare us as we move into the next season. I've shared for, for this church, Sweetwaters, in this year alone already speaking about different seasons. And then every, you know, life cycle, every moment there's seasons that we go through. We might be in a season of joy. We might be in a season of grief. We might be in a season of just trying to navigate through life in itself. But in every season, there's also, as much as there's a starting point for that season, there's also a finish line. And you see, but how we finish this assignment might determine our next assignment. How you finish this season will determine what your next season is going to look like. And our key verse in 1 Peter 5.10 offers us this little bit of hope, this nugget of encouragement, a little determination, a little strength to keep us going when we feel maybe that this season wasn't the greatest season that we've been through. And it says, And after you have suffered a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to this internal glory in Christ, will himself restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. See, here's the, the key that I want you to understand this morning. We can overcome those temporary temptations to give in, to give up by understanding who God is. You can overcome those, those, those temptations to tap out, to say, I don't want to do this anymore. It's too much to deal with. It's too much to handle with. I cannot do this. And I want to say this because I want to first and foremost tell you this, and maybe, maybe I'm going to pop a few balloons this morning, that it's not about you. It's not about your strength. It's not about your situation right now that you are in right now even. It's all about King Jesus. It's about the season that you're in, but it's understanding that you are there for a plan and a purpose in that season. And God will establish you because that's the very word of God that speaks about this. He will confirm you. He will affirm you. He will establish you. He will restore you. He will revive you. But not in your own strength, in your own ability, all through Him and the Holy Spirit. You see, when you feel discouraged, maybe you're in that season, that season of your life where you feel depleted, where you feel discouraged, where you feel everything is going wrong that could possibly go wrong is going wrong. You just want to give up. You don't feel motivated. You don't want to move on. You just want to maybe crawl into that little space and just say, I'm done. And I totally understand that. Believe me, I understand this. While it is tempting to quit, while it is in that season that you find yourself that it feels like all you're facing is giants and you feel like a grasshopper, where it feels like all you're doing is marching around a wall and you don't even see the effects of cracks on that wall, you don't see anything tumbling down, when it feels that all you're doing is just going into a place where it's just deserted and it's just a desert with dry bones and nothing is growing there. I understand that it is that moment and that time when you feel that this is just maybe not the season that I want to be in and I want to just give up. I want to quit. But again, I want to say and I want to just encourage you, it's not how you start, it's how you finish. And maybe your, your, your year that you are in right now, 2024, is not the year that you've planned for. Maybe in 2023, towards the end, you have those New Year's resolutions about what you want to accomplish. What do you want to do with your life? And now we're already in October and you look like, and you reflect and you're like, but that's not even where I wanted to be. But it's not how you start, it's how you finish. And when I say the enemy wants nothing but to just for you to give up. But our God, our Savior, does not want you to give up. He wants you to continue. 
He wants you to continue your race and finish well. You see, maybe there's a hard conversation that you need to have. God's strength is in you to have that hard conversation. Maybe it's with a family member. Maybe it's with a spouse. Maybe it's with a work colleague, a friend. Is there a physical weakness convincing you it's over? Maybe you saw the medical report. Maybe the doctor came, the specialist came and have a chat with you, a phone call to say, you need to come in. We need to discuss And that in itself will cause fear and anxiety. But I want to encourage you, in God's strength, you can still finish well. Because as much as we are grateful for doctors, physicians, for specialists, the key here is in God. And so this morning, I want to encourage you, in His strength, it is not over. Is there a financial limitation that is preventing you from just stepping forward, from just making ends meet, from numbing you almost, from causing you to have sleepless nights where you just don't want to even get out of bed because it's like, I don't know how we're going to make it through this day even, never mind this month. And I want to encourage you in God's strength, trusting and believing in Him. He is your provider. He is with you. You see, every assignment or season God calls us to to offers an eternal perspective. And sometimes I have a hard time remembering this through my temporary thoughts because my temporary thoughts are telling me in my temporary, my, my, my earthly eyes, if you want to call it that, my natural eyes, I'm seeing the natural situations around me. My financial limitations, my sickness, my doctor's report, the struggles at work, the struggles at school, struggles with family, struggles with marriage. But God does not call us to just see things from our natural perspective, from natural eyes, but eternal glory and eternal understanding. He's asking us to, not to see from here, but see the things above. And God has called you to open your eyes and see what he is busy with in the background that you don't will be able to ever see with your natural eyes. And this morning I want you to focus with your spiritual eyes and see God is at work, encouraging you, strengthening you. And as the scripture speaks about in 1 Peter, that he will affirm you, confirm you, restore you, strengthen you, And I love that last bit, establish you. You might not feel worthy. You might not feel that you are anything. You might not feel that you can accomplish anything, that you not even feel valuable. Maybe you're listening this morning and maybe words have been spoken over you makes you feel that you're not valuable. But this morning I want to encourage you, you are valuable. Because the very author and perfecter and finisher will establish you. And so this morning, may God strengthen you. May you finish well this year. As we step into the last few months of this year. I encourage you, it's not how you started this year, it's how you finish, and finish well. And so, Heavenly Father, and Almighty God and King, we come before you, and we thank you, Lord God, that you are with each and every one of us, Lord, restoring, confirming, and establishing, and strengthening each and every one of us. And maybe for some of us this morning as we're listening, Lord, maybe for some of us this year has been tough. It's been hard. Maybe for some of us we had a lot of loss. Maybe for some of us we had hardships. 
Maybe for some of us, we had negative reports. But I pray this morning, Lord God, that we will finish well. Because we know the God that is with us, and God is in us. And he is strengthening us. We thank you, Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Shalom. We thank you for all you do. Heavenly Father and Almighty God and King, will you just continue to saturate each and every one of us this morning, even right now, wherever we find ourselves, whether we are doing a school run, whether we're doing uh, something at work already, Lord God, whether we are at home, in the comfort of our home, just listening to this, whether we are actually in a hospital bed right now, I thank you, Lord God, that you are renewing, restoring, reviving each and every one of us this morning. We thank you, Lord God, that you give us the encouragement, you give us the strength to finish well. I pray, Lord God, that you would just continue to uplift, just carry us, where we feel a little bit depleted, where we feel that we are not able to move forward. Will you just take us by the hand and carry us to where we need to be? Lord, we bring before you the war that's happening in Israel right now. In the Middle East, Lord God, and so many people, so many innocent people are being affected on both sides, Lord God. And I pray, Lord God, that you would just continue to be with each and every one. We pray especially for the children that are being affected, Lord God. I pray, Lord God, that you would just cover them, Lord. Will your hand of protection just be over them, Lord. Lord God, that you would just continue to be in the midst of that situation, Lord God. War is ugly, Lord God. But I pray, Lord God, that even in this situation, Lord God, that the beauty of your grace, the beauty of your mercy will come forth. I pray, Lord God, that you would just ultimately reign supreme in that situation. I pray, Lord God, for your favor. Pray for your refuge even in that situation. And Lord, we pray even now for America right now as they're struggling with this whole idea of understanding the hurricanes. I pray, God, even as there's evacuation plans and situations where people are just sitting in fear, Lord God, where they have to leave behind everything that they have built, everything that they have in their life that they have collect it and in a sense they have to pack that away and leave it behind and hope that when they return that everything is still stable everything is still there and they haven't lost everything but i pray this morning lord as many scientists have worked out the direction and the path of hurricane Milton. Lord, ultimately, Lord God, as much as we look at scientific evidence and we look at how the scientists are working the path and everything, that how the hurricane will, you know, trajectory of this, ultimately, Lord, you are in control. And you can move and displace anything by your mere words. And I pray this morning, Lord, it is my earnest prayer this morning, and I want you, as you're watching this morning, Yes, you might not be affected. You might not even be in America. You might be in the comfort of South Africa where there is not much hurricanes happening in this part of this world. But can I tell you, there's still brothers and sisters in Christ that needs our prayer, that needs to intercede for the situation. There's churches in that area. There's people in that area. And so this morning, Lord, we pray as we stand united in this situation, Lord God, that, Lord, that... As we pray, Lord God, Lord, that you would just move that hurricane, Lord God. Lord, and if that's your perfect will, Lord God, for that to just still continue on its trajectory in that path, Lord God, we pray for, and I say this, minimal, minimal damage, Lord, and no lives being lost in the situation, Lord. I pray, Lord God, that you would just continue to have your hand upon that place that district, that state, that situation, Lord God. I pray, Lord God, that there will be churches and people networking 
to help those who are being you know, affected by this, Lord God. And that we would as we continue to, just to pray for every situation in that country. We thank you for all you do and continue to do. I pray, Lord God, that you would just continue to watch over us, even in this country, Lord God. Praying, Lord God, that we, Lord God, as our Africans, Lord God, as we continue just, Lord, to understand, Lord God, what you have for South Africa, Lord God, this beautiful, beautiful country, Lord God. Pray, God, for the crime to go down. Pray, God, for corruption to go down. Pray, God, for the younger generation to rise up or to take their rightful place, Lord God. I pray, God, for your hand of favor, Lord God, for godly men and women to rise up, to take their place, Lord God. No longer will the church be silent. But, Lord, I pray, Lord, that we would just speak and speak with authority. We thank you for all you do. We pray, Lord God, for the sick. We pray, Lord God, for those who have lost. We pray for those who have financial struggles. We pray, Lord God, that you would just release your authority, your power, your favor, your blessing upon each and every person in their situation, Lord God. Where is poverty, where is sickness, where is grief and sorrow, where is just problems with family, I pray now in the mighty name of Jesus that you would release a word, a new song of freedom upon their lives. We give you all the glory and honor in Jesus' mighty name. We thank you for all you do. Thank you, Lord God, that your name is all conquering, all powerful. There is none like you. Come on, somebody. Just say it with me. There is none like you. There is power of affirmation. And so this morning, will you affirm? Will you confirm and affirm the very essence of who God is in your life. And so repeat after me. There is none like you, King Jesus. Heavenly Father, Lord, mighty God and King, we thank you, Lord, that whatever season we are in, whatever we might be facing, we thank you, Lord God, there is none like you. Your name is greater. Your name is higher. Your name is wider. Your name is stronger than any other situation that we might be facing. And I thank you, Lord God, that deep within our hearts, we know this truth and we know it well. That even though we are maybe in this season where we feel that it's just too much, we are thankful, Lord God. That just like as David was praying in the caves, we thank you, Lord God, that I can worship you as long as my heart is beating, as long as I have oxygen in my lungs, I will lift my praises to you. You deserve all the glory, all the honor, all the worship. We give you this. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen and amen. Thank you so much, each and every one of you who was part of this morning's prayer. And if you're watching this later on, we thank you for joining us this morning, and I pray that you have blessed, that you are blessed this morning, that, that the God of the universe, the God of the cosmos, the Milky Way, and beyond, loves you so, so incredibly much. Just understand that significance, that he loves you. And so, in this season that you are in, this year that is coming to a close, finish well. Finish well in his presence. Finish well being saturated by his grace, his mercy, and his protection. Knowing that he loves you, and he wants the best for you. God bless your family. See you all Sunday. Bye for now.